Welcome back, friends and lovers. Excuse this weird little intro there. Like, I couldn't quite decide if things were working or not. Apparently, they are. So, here today, I'm going to talk to you about a special film. A film that means a lot to me on the inside here. I'm a big fan of it, and it took me a while to get my hands on this film again. But, way back in the day, many, many moons ago, before some of you out there might have even been alive... A weird old time called the 90s. When we wanted to watch a film, we'd take a trip to the local video shop, me and the family. And it's usually a case of you can rent three movies for five, ten pounds, maybe. And one of the particular films that my family ended up renting was this movie that I'm talking about today called Still Crazy. I'm a huge fan of rock music, as you can see on the wall behind me. A film about... Uh, to wind it all down, it's about a band called Strange Fruit. And the story opens with them in the late 70s at the height of their popularity and fame. And the whole show that they're performing at goes wrong. And they end up splitting up and going their own separate ways. 20 years later in the 90s, or the late 90s, as when the film was set, the band is given an opportunity to reform, retour, and, and try and find the old glory days again. Off the bat, music in this film is absolutely awesome. I love me some good old-fashioned British rock music, and this film has the good old-fashioned British rock music. Songs like All Over the World, The Flame Still Burns, What Might Have Been. Every song that plays in this film, as performed by the band in the film, it's a treat and a pleasure to watch. As for the cast of this film, holy hell, Bill Nye as the singer of a rock band, not Bill Nye the science guy, Bill Nye. This guy is an aging frontman of a former great rock band. Kicks the ass. Billy Connolly, one of Britain's greatest stand-up comedians as the roadie. It's absolutely awesome. And a name that I'm going to drop on you that might not mean a lot to a few people, but it means a lot to me, Jimmy Nail. Anyone who didn't grow up in the 90s might not know who jimmy nail is for me i discovered jimmy nail when he released an album called crocodile shoes and a series of these like british country western songs that were damn damn good in fact after i finished doing this video i think i'm gonna go back and listen to that album but he also had like some other banging hits uh he did a song called ain't no doubt ain't no doubt she lied to me Great song. Go look it up on YouTube now. Jimmy Nails is an ugly, jaudy looking bloke. But you know what? The guy can sing and the guy can act. Uh, but in this film, as I mentioned earlier, the band's given the opportunity to reform after 20 odd years and, and go back out on the road again. And they've, they've all got hang ups from what happened way back when in the 70s. They've all moved on with their lives. Jimmy Nail plays the bass player of the band who got married. He started a, a casual good business with his partner, and they're doing well. Uh, you've got, I believe it's Timothy Spall or Rafe Spall. I'm sure his name's the Spall, but he plays Beano, the drummer. Uh, <laughs> he's always been a bit of a pisshead, lives in a caravan, and uh, he's, he's basically on the run from what he thinks is the tax people or the inland revenue through the entirety of the film. But this film is, like, steeped in 70s mythology when it came to like these classic 70s bands that would always find like connections with the earth and things around them dropping acid at stonehenge leads to key points like the mysticism of rock and roll the gods of rock and roll come into play in this kind of movie and that's what i love about music movie i was going back to call it a biopic it's not a biopic it's not based on a real band but when it comes to classic rock music there's an air of mysticism particularly surrounding british bands from the 70s and this sort of plays on that effect from them as i mentioned bill nye is the singer of the band he's like the aging washed up he's past his best he's approaching his 50s he's freaking out about it he's broke he's on hard times things ain't going good for him but he's still maintaining some sort of facade that he's still a rock god with loads of money there's actually a scene in this film that when I watched it, 
it, made, it reminded me of the Osbournes, and the Osbournes wouldn't come out until about five years after this film came out. So when I'm watching Bill Nye as this washed up rock star on a giant lavish manor, trying to figure out how to turn the TV on with a series of TV remotes, it just takes me back to what Ozzy was doing <laughs> in uh, the Osbournes TV show, which, again, fun TV watching, fun TV watching. And uh, beer for the rock and roll motorhead. Uh, this film isn't about a metal band. It's about a, a rock band. They're a rock band. If you don't understand the difference between rock and metal, listen to some rock and metal, and you should, in time, pick up the subtle nuances in it. But Still Crazy was definitely one of my favourite films growing up. I remember way back when this film came out in about 1998, Renting it from the local video shop and sitting down with my family and watching it. And I absolutely loved this movie. It was one of my favourite movies. It, was, it stuck out to me as a child watching this film with my family. And there's a couple of other movies based around music that I'd like to talk about. Uh, coming up in maybe the not so distant future. But still crazy. 1998, Jimmy Nail, Bill Nye. If you haven't seen it. I thoroughly recommend you run out there and rent it. I say run out there and rent it. There's nowhere for you to run to to rent it. I found it on Google Play. And I think it cost me six ninety nine, 99 And I own that film forever. And I'm a big fan. I'm really... like It's just a fun little rock and roll romp. Of a band past its best trying to get back together. And the best thing about these movies is... When it works, it works. You always see the band at like their lowest point... And they're arguing and there's problems between them when the whole thing first starts off. But then you get that point in the film where they all just come together and they blend and they become a band. And um, when the song All Over the World plays, it's a point of the film that's just like, yes. I remember watching it the other night and I got chills when it got to that point. You see them sort of in their own elements before that, when they're doing their lead-up gigs, they haven't performed together. There's things that they haven't quite figured out. The singer's going too over the top with the hair and the makeup and trying to put on a pantomime sort of show. The rest of the band's a bit pissed off about it. But this film's it's got it's got conflict, it's got heart, got resolution, it's got rock and roll up the ass. I cannot recommend this film enough. It is definitely one of those I've never known. I've never met anyone in life who's actually seen this film. There was a point in the 90s where British cinema was pumping out all sorts of movies that would go... Uh, I don't think they'd get cinema releases. I believe this film did get a cinema release. This was before the age of gigantic billion dollar blockbusters. It's a small, tight, hour and a half movie. It's got some rock and roll in it. It's got some great performances. It's a funny film. I can't recommend it enough. So, for this bank holiday weekend, or any weekend for that matter, should you want to film with a little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of heart, and a little bit of a good time, I cannot recommend Still Crazy Enough. This film definitely gets a full YES from me. That's the highest rating I'm giving. One thumb's good, two thumbs good. YES is, is as good as it gets. And this gets that from me. I love this film. It's a personal favourite of mine. Give it a chance, should you like it. And have a pleasant weekend, everybody.